the February 6, 2019 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee on this lovely Wednesday <coughs> evening. My favorite kind of weather, 35 and rainy. Um, there is no general public, so there will be no general public comment. We have minutes to approve the November 14, 2018 minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Okay. Uh, chair's report, just a few things. One is uh, we have a couple things from Sarah this afternoon, or maybe it was yesterday afternoon. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, one is the schedule. Um, so hopefully folks got that notice. It's a pretty abbreviated one given the few proposals that we're going to go through, the uh, hope is to get through them by April 3rd with April 17th. So we can see what, what, uh, what those are. Um, the second thing is notice that um, questions are due to applicants. Sarah's given us a huge amount of time. It's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So thanks for that hour, 9 to 10, is that it? Was it 9 to 10 tonight that, that we have? Um, I, I, I guess we do Oh, excellent. OK, so um, and that would really only be two proposals. Is that right? No, three proposals. So if folks can do that to Sarah as quickly as possible, that would, that would be great. Um, the third thing is you may um, have gotten from the Community Preservation Coalition the um, one of their latest notices, which was the Act to Preserve Community Preservation, um, which is the <coughs> my understanding is that's that increase in registry recording fees, where statewide we get our we get our money coming in. Um, you may have noticed that both of our our new state uh, Rep. Lindsay Sabados and our new. State Senator Joe Comerford are both co-sponsors of that act. Um, so if, if uh, folks have questions about that, I think getting back to Stuart or, um, but our state rep and state senator are certainly on board for that state senate bill in the state in the state uh, state house bill. Um, excuse me, a uh, folk. A uh, person who just came in, do you, is there any general public comment you'd like to give? We kind of rushed through our beginning. Uh, no, I'm no. waiting for the um, uh, late for community uh, application okay. for. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And, well, and welcome. And we'll get to that hopefully reasonably soon. So, last meeting we had the report from Stuart Sagnor um, regarding the Community Preservation Statewide Coalition. Uh, I thought it would be good to follow up with that discussion while it was somewhat fresh in our minds. If it went much longer, I'd forget everything that he said. Um, and the uh, discussion that we can have, I think, really is, uh, is it a viable enough organization that warrants our paying our full dues and becoming um, members? Um, so I think it would make sense. Uh, Sarah said that we're not, we have not been invoiced, but until we, uh, I think it would make sense to have that discussion now, when we're invoiced again, or we can back, go back and pay, I suppose, a past invoice, is that possible? Uh, the last one we, I mean, it wouldn't really make sense. I don't, they, they bill annually. Okay. So they, we're expecting a new one, I, I guess, anytime soon. So I think the, the, if there becomes a motion on the table, the motion would be, do we pay full dues or uh, do we pay partial dues, or do we not pay any dues uh, um, at all? George, last time we made the decision not to pay in full, but to give essentially a donation, mm -hmm. uh, which was, I think, a third of our dues, something like that, Sarah? Uh, I think a quarter. A quarter. A quarter. Uh, so, uh, comments on Stuart's presentation and how to move forward with it? I, I was impressed. I didn't really understand how much lobbying they did at the state house, and I, I was pretty impressed. At, uh, unless something has a push 
from behind that doesn't seem to get through state government. So I, I was amazed at how much lobbying they did to keep this thing together. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was pretty impressed by that, their efforts in that regard. Other comments? It's, it's really a similar comment. Um, I think I had focused or thought of them as kind of a technical body as a resource, um, and I was reacting to Sarah's feeling that there really had not been much of a, of a resource for her, and I was pretty ignorant. I knew they did some lobbying, but um, the extent of the lobbying and how critical it had been to both the, the, the um, establishment of the, of the Community Preservation Act and then the, the changes in the, the uh, perpetual need to lobby for uh, a reasonable funding amount. Um, I think it's worth rejoining myself in light of that. Not for the, not for the technical um, assistance, but but really to have a coordinated statewide effort to support this legislation and the funding for it. Sarah, can you remind us what our dues are? It's like 5,000 or 4,000 something? 4,000 or 4,500. Okay. Does it vary from year to year? It mm -hmm. doesn't. It's based on a formula. Uh, that has nothing to do with our... Um, I think we're like we're 10 times to our, our size. Too. We're not here. It's graduated. Our window. It's graduated. So there's a category. Yeah, and it's, it's based on local total local receipts. Did you say Boston was twenty thousand or something? So it's even though they're Boston is the only municipality in that category. Is that it? I think he said. Other comments? <coughs> yeah. Um, so I. Uh, two, two sort of general statements. I think the first would be on, um, on their function as a lobbyist. Um, lobbyist. Uh, yeah. I, I've done some lobbying. I've been lobbied. Um, I've always considered it difficult to quantify how important lobbying is in, in, in changing people's minds. Um, I think it's very easy. Um, there were a lot of we statements during his presentation. Um, I don't know what we means. It means just him or everybody who supported this. Um, but when, in my experience, when you get an outcome that that matches the work that you were doing, you take credit for it. That's what that's part of what lobbyists do. Um, which brings me to my second point. Uh, the CPA puts <coughs> money, state money, into the hands of communities and allows them to use it at their discretion. Um, obviously, the portion that we raise is, is, is the lion's share, but at least initially, um, it was about state money that, that they could, that, that elected officials could bring into their community. Um, I have yet to meet an elected official who didn't do everything that was possible to get money from the state brought into their community. And they don't need a lobbyist to do that. Um, my, my, my feeling is, is that if the money is available, um, and they've been doing it in the past on the basis of surpluses, if the money is available, the legislatures will channel it back into their districts um, because discretionary money is is gold it's just solid gold it's it's free money that, that communities get to spend any way they want to do it and I think any elected official presented with that opportunity is going to is going to seize on it so that it's really about whether there's a surplus at this point it's a, it's it's, a, it's it's about whether there's a surplus or not um, so that leaves us with the question about, do we want to support, because I, what it really boils down to is, do we want to support this group in their efforts to lobby for legislation that's going to increase that pool of money <coughs> permanently, so that we're not in a situation where we're 
you know, looking for a, a surplus that may or may not be there on an annual basis, but find another funding mechanism, whether it's an increase on titles, you know, title fees or, or whatever. Um, that to me is the fundamental question, is, is our dues um, worth supporting that effort? And do we believe that our support of that effort is essential in getting it done? That's, that's how I'm framing it in my mind. And if you have any question about where I am on this, I'm, unconv <laughs> <laughs> I'm unconvinced. But that's how I approach it. So I'll follow up <coughs> my esteemed uh, colleague here with two things. One, I think the other thing, Chris, besides just trying to add an increase of the fees, is that <coughs> CPC does play a technical assistance role for those communities that can't afford a SARA and who are trying to do the right thing, and they do provide a lot more assistance than perhaps a city like Northampton needs. So in that way, we're kind of helping to support a larger CPC network, I think. <coughs> but the second thing is I, I'm just not clear on this committee, do we have a discrete budget that this $4,500 takes away from that could be used for other things? Or I, I, I'm on the planning board, but the planning board doesn't have a budget per se for joining things that I'm aware of. So I just wonder how the budget works out. So that comes out of the 5% administrative <coughs> set aside. Uh, so that goes to pay my salary, mailings, newspaper ads, signs, basically the work of the committee and any funding that isn't spent out of that goes back into the unreserved fund that can be used for projects. Okay. So, and I don't want to go down that kind of whole fiscal route, but historically does the CPC usually turn, revert money back to the yes. general fee? Yep. So, Chris, just so I'm clear about what you're saying. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, um, Pondering the notion that if the CPC did not exist, the CPC, the coalition, did not exist, um, that our legislators would be out there fighting for this anyway. Uh, it's a fair question. I, I I don't actually know. I think that now that now that the CPA is there, I, I think it would be a different kettle of fish if we were trying to create the CPA yeah. from whole cloth, yeah. which is why I, I sort of differentiate, you know the sort of hand to mouth way that we're doing it now from this idea that we're gonna, you know, expand the, the, the funding into perpetuity. Mm -hmm. But absent that, and that's why I frame it as, what I really see this as is, do we want to pay for them to lobby on this, uh, effectively this single issue? And I, I, I actually, I appreciate your point about other communities. I'm not sure I appreciate giving money to other communities, but I, but I do appreciate your point. Um, but I, I think that I think that since the CPA is there, um, when the state has an opportunity to spend extra money in years where there's a surplus, one of the ways that would be popular for legislators to do this is to put it into what they just call what they call discretionary pots of money, where communities get to actually it, it's not earmarked for a specific purpose other than to support the, the CPA, which is a pretty broad mandate. I mean, we, we're able, on behalf of the people of Northampton, to do some pretty, a, a pretty broad range of things, even within, you know, the parameters set up by the CPA. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the mind that, you know, if the money's going to be there, they're going to find a way to direct it into their districts, and, and we will always be a good opportunity to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I so often agree with Chris, but this time I just don't. <laughs> um, you know, it's not like that money is sitting there without a lot of asks for it. I think there's a whole lot of asks. I think there's, I mean, there there are uh, so many unmet needs. Uh, and I don't think we've gotten the surplus that many years, Some and some years we haven't. So even if they were not to be you know, lobbying for a more permanent fix, I think it would be, I, 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 I'm not as sanguine as you are that there would be the same result. <coughs> of and I think there's, there's, to have a kind of a organizing entity, not that they, I'm sure they don't do it all themselves. They have, they are, they are a partnership really of, of entities, but, but to have that as a focal point, um, uh, to, to 
coordinate the activities, not to do it all themselves, but to coordinate it, and then to identify issues and changes in the legislation, like the, the changes in the 2012 legislation, which takes an awful lot of technical knowledge and grunt work and persistence and, and all that sort of stuff. So I, I think they do more than perhaps you're willing to credit them with. Julia, any comments? Yeah. Uh, David. <laughs> David, anything you want to yeah. add? I think we're kind of it's an unverifiable we'll claim. Sure. But on the other yeah. hand, what choice do we have? I mean, someone has to write. I mean, we're not we're not going to suddenly have politicians who write laws. So someone's got to write laws, and this tends to be lobbyists. And they're trying to make a pretty big. I think there is a good chance that politicians like the idea of structured funding schemes, so they don't have to use discretionary funding to 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 mine the gap every year. That seems like a good push, and you know, who knows down the road there have been changes in what CPA is allowed to do over time. Is as he outlined whether he did that or not. Um, you know, I'm sure they were instrumental in actually getting the verbiage in front of the people to sign the documents at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, I mean, would I like it for a third of the price? Sure, but I don't know what choice we have. <laughs> you know, if, if it's like the advertising, you know, ten percent of advertising is effective. I don't know which 10%, so I don't know what we can do about it. We could be free riders, I guess, and just let everyone else pay and not pay. I don't think we want I don't. It's not that much money. It's not. I don't think it's knocking any of our projects out. Um, so. uh, Martha, you asked a question. Do you have other pending comments? Yeah, <coughs> no, I think I pretty much agree with um, Julia supporting them. But I do appreciate Chris, your point of view, mm -hmm. very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, if there were ever a situation, let's say, um, where there were an effort afloat in our campaign to overturn this, I know that it happened once, but it did, wasn't successful, but it could happen again, you never know. Um, perhaps being a member would be advantageous. They could come to our rescue, or at least support us, so. I'd, I'd be willing to support them again. I should add also that, you know, I don't know on this question of if there's random chunks of money sitting around in the budget, the state budget on a yearly basis. I don't know that my first choice would be to give it all to CBA. You know, I mean, I, maybe I want to go to the schools or something. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so, I, and I also don't think, you know, the people in the House and, and, and the state senators are the steward when they're deciding where to put that money. Uh, they care what a lobbying group of that scheme of care says. There's many bigger lobbying groups. But that thing doesn't matter on this structured change that, that they're trying to do. Sarah, anything you want to add to this discussion? No. no. Is there a book? I just one more comment. I, I, don't, I don't think we're tied to an amount. I mean, they gave us a bill. We could. We, we sent them some money. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're obligated to pay the full amount or, uh, you know, choose to be in it for the rest of our existence. So it looks like we have a lot of freedom to uh, contribute, but maybe not at the level that they're asking. So I think we have some freedom here, perhaps, to uh, support the organization. Yeah, this is in a non-member category, though. So then we yeah. And we also uh, have we also have to judge that worth, yeah. right? Like this is what they say the worth is. So what do we think the worth is? Fifty percent of that? Fifty percent of what? We're not sure what we're buying this much. So it's apparently, like, if we pay if we pay one dollar less than that, the the we're, we're not right. members. Right. Like, but we're not making use of the membership <coughs> anyway. Do we have benefits that, at whatever level? I mean, even if we're not members, we get benefits from the organization. Yeah. Or right. we can contribute something to the. But is that really the way we want to go? Yeah, well, that, I'm just saying we're. Can, it's not like we can pick it up and committing ourselves to uh, in perpetuity. We're supporting a nice website and a database and a constant <laughs> comment. There you go. Yeah, a newsletter. All right. But perhaps there's something we could ask of them. And maybe not now, but in the future. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a need, something or something which they could do better or they could do differently or do in addition. Yeah, I do think his 
statements about, you know, there's nowhere else on the state website that you can go and find this. That's partially because that they've always known that this organization is out there, so why would the state waste money on a website? Right? There's already a website that does that. The state does all kinds of other things when they have websites. Yeah. So. And they're not committing a person or time to do it, whereas if they're not committing committed the person and the time, it takes a lot of man hours to keep that site and database up. Right. Just out of curiosity, the, um, the debate about the funding churches that was taking place um, right around the time I came out, or maybe before, was the CPC involved in that at all? I think they did some of the public is curing the groups. I'm not sure the extent of it. That could be that could be a really valuable role for them if issues like that came up in the future. And just something that makes it that sort of statewide that would affect all the communities. I was going to point out that along those lines that I at least I found the um, fact that they circulated the interpretation of the case by a plan attorney who was well versed in that in that field was I thought very useful. Yeah, he can't interpret this stuff. So that, that I mean, you know, that's not going to happen every year, hopefully, but when that does happen, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, stuff. I agree. Any other discussion on this? So I guess the question is, I mean, we're not being asked for dues yet, but is there a motion on the floor? We really can't commit ourselves to something in the future, but we can sort of have sense of the committee now motion. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't clear. I'm not sure that they're going to send us an invoice if we haven't told them we want to be members. So I think you mentioned that our invoice didn't come. So I think just we went have to, to no, no. Yeah, vote to tell them we want to be members and then okay. they'll send us the invoice. Well, can someone make a motion, Linda, while you're at it? I would move that uh, we endorse the notion of uh, resuming membership in CPC. With full membership? With full membership. I don't think there's any partial yet. Yeah. <coughs> the full payment of their dues. Is there a second for that? Second that. George, start to get that motion. Uh, further discussion on this. All those in favor. All those opposed. Abstain. And one abstention. Okay, so Sarah will take care of that for us. Yes. Thank you. Very much. Um, Stuart did set his slides. Did, did everyone get that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. His uh, PowerPoint will show. All right. We're also, as you recall, last meeting um, had the housing discussion. And again, before that discussion flees my mind, I thought it would be useful for us to see if we needed to have any further discussion on on that. Comments or thoughts on the housing issue as presented to us? I have been contacted by another, by a member of the housing partnership who's a friend who wants to have some further discussion with me. But I have no idea what the content of that, that is. So I actually would actually like to hear what other people's reactions were and thoughts. I had a follow-up question, which may be others might share was that there was some different information going around about whether, um, whether you can bond non-city properties. And I guess what I understood coming out of the conversation was that in the state you can, but in Northampton we don't do that. And let's just get some confirmation. No, you so uh, Bond Council indicated that there's conflicting opinions about that around the state. Um, some communities interpret it one way, some interpret it another way. It's a, an interesting part of the statute, but um, it would be preferable to them not to do that because they wouldn't have to try and, and justify one portion of the state law versus another. That's a local interpretation? That, well, from our, our, bond, our municipal bond council in Okay. I'm not suggesting we do it. I was just curious about, because there was some disagreement about what is the parameters, what we're allowed to do. So. Yeah, it's uh, bonding for that for a affordable housing project that's not municipal is not called out as an allowable bonding expense in the general state laws, but some communities have interpreted that anything that's allowable under CPA is therefore welcome. Okay. Can we get that clarification into the minutes for this one? Uh, in case someone reads it somewhere? Yes. Thank you. 
just to remind me what you just said. <laughs> So there's a list in, uh, in I, I don't know, I, I'll put the exact uh, notation, in, but in MGL, whatever section it is, there's a list of allowable bonding projects, mm -hmm. and none of those are affordable housing projects that are owned by another entity. But uh, some bond councils for other communities have interpreted um, the CPA statute to mean that you can bond for any one of those purposes. But there are challenges to that. So this, 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 uh, <coughs> well, Sarah, searching for that, George, you want to? So, <coughs> you know, on that same issue, just uh, to me, it strikes that um, the affordable housing stock is a really big issue for Northampton, and I think the increase of that is really, really important, and yet we're hamstrung because our, <coughs> our own municipal housing authority doesn't really try to proactively create more housing stock along those lines. Um, so there are other aspects of the CPA that can be funded through bonding, long-term bonding, but affordable housing can't. So I, I, I guess I would want to push that area a little bit ourselves if, in fact, the Northampton Housing Authority isn't going to come to the table as a developer, and they're the only ones who are eligible for the funding, for the bonding under this interpretation. Because um, I think it is a, a huge need in Northampton, even though we have recently had some really good developments down on Pleasant Street and other places. I think it's it's still not <coughs> meeting the need of uh, city. So. so, first southwest in Boston. Yeah, Boston. Okay, other comments? Um, and I should have brought a copy with me. Maybe you can refresh my memory, Sarah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the mayor posted a, a press release last week um, related to an initiative involving the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, where they are looking at um, kind of what the final thing is going to look like. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. But they have been convening meetings with um, interested parties and, and, and stockholders, shareholders, um, regarding barriers to affordable housing, access to affordable housing in Northampton. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. I know that um, uh, my wife, was, who works for Goggins, was, was part of one of these round tables um, uh, to get perspective of the realtors industry as to how they perceive it. At this point, I think they're just doing data collection, but at some point, they're going to probably generate some sort of report, whether it will have recommendations in it. That's something you might want to. I should need to familiarize myself with more, but I know that that's going on. So. Other comments? Housing start. Well, I had a <coughs> conversation with uh, Phil Ringwood. Uh, that's his last name, right? uh, who's the executive director of Dow South. Remember, they come to us a couple times. And just for your information, that project there on Hatfield Street, I believe it's Locust yeah. and Hatfield, um, there's seems something there, and they're hoping, uh, I think they're $300,000 shy, but um, let's see, one diocese is sort of committed to the bridge funding there, and both Dial Self and Hampshire County Friends of the Homeless are going to be doing a, book, a big uh, push for donations. Um, but he was really optimistic of trying to get things up and even complete by the end of the summer, early fall. So it'll be proof. Uh, we'll hope to see that project come to fruition. We put in quite a bit of money uh, into that. Do you know anything about the status of that, Sarah? Of the Hatchel uh, Street project? Yeah. I don't know. They have not uh, sent an invoice. For no, them. he said they have not yeah. uh, committed any of the CDC money. There was a little construction issue that has delayed them somewhat to his annoyance, but they'll be moving right There are even that we expedited that whole session. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nor have the end had to be inspected. And it was, it wasn't an email, but to give it to them. I should check in with them because if they end up invoicing us for things that they didn't propose, which it sounds like maybe they are, then that I wouldn't be able to process. 
I think it would be very useful for you to check in with them. And um, just to follow up to what Chris was talking about, the um, City of Northampton launches a project to assess fair access to housing. That's essentially the kickoff to the fair housing study that was not funded by the CPC, but was eventually funded through the mayor's office. Ah, okay. So PVPC is doing this. Thing. All right. Any other uh, housing discussion? Stop. I mean, I think the upside is, is pretty clear that there's not really anything we can do to respond to their concerns other than smile and nod <coughs> and, and smile and respond to any projects that come our way, which I think we've been doing. So. Well, I think one one question they posed would be to increase the set aside uh, from the 15% that we have. 15? Is that right? 10. Uh, to 15 or something. So. Uh, that if within the realm of possibility, we could unilaterally pump up our set aside. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure that we that there is a motion on the table, unless someone would want to do something like that. Set that, that motion at, at this point. Is there? Can someone think of? And, I, I, I'm just. You know, when I look at the numbers that we've generated over the last couple of sessions, set aside isn't going to make us, isn't going to end up, isn't going to result in us putting more money than we're already putting in on affordable right. housing. You know, we, 48% of the cycle before this one, I think I was just looking at, went to affordable housing. So if we increase the set aside to 15%, it's a gesture, and it's a well-meaning gesture, but it doesn't do, we do more by just putting the 48% in. Yeah. And by, as you said, nodding at those projects and funding them. And I think that that's, you know, the better statement is, let's fund affordable housing projects. Let's make a commitment to funding affordable housing projects when they're, when they look like they're solid projects and they're good proposals, we want to fund them. And we'll do, we'll go out of our way to try to fund them. <coughs> Which is, which has certainly been the case. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, we've sure. never met an affordable housing project we haven't liked, right? Uh, not a creation project. All of the new unit creation projects have been funded. Yeah. Because I don't even think we could tie future committees' hands yeah. to a different set aside. They would just vote it down if they wanted to break it. So, in the absence of a motion, any more discussion on this? Do you like city council and pass a resolution and feel resolved? Or we could give it to a subcommittee. To pass a resolution and feel even more resolved. <laughs> Why don't we just pass a resolution that there should be more affordable housing so there is tomorrow. It'll there be you go. I'm taking that as a, there is a no. no. no I actually, I, I gradually dredged up a comment. <laughs> um, I, was kind of, I was trying to figure out what had prompted, uh, and I don't know if anybody has any insights into what it, what it prompted. There was a lot of work that, that was put into that presentation, and the, you know, the information was certainly interesting, and I appreciated the amount of effort that went into it, but I wasn't really sure towards t to what end. It felt like there was a grievance there, but I wasn't sure what the grievance was if you look on a percentage basis, affordable housing is, is lower than the other categories. If, but if you look on a project basis, the more housing projects that have been presented have been funded, have been successful than any other. And all I could guess was that there was some unhappiness about the level of funding um, on the Village Hill project and you know, whether somebody so I don't know, Sarah, if you've heard anything or have any anybody has any insights because no, it's coming from somewhere. That was the general sense I got, but I, I don't know for sure. Either. One thing we could do is simply request, Sarah, that you pass on thanks to um, David, uh, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick uh, for doing that presentation. Okay. I would not be averse to, um, <coughs> you know, asking the mayor if they would do. They can make a customary to put someone from the partnership on the CPC. I'd be fine with that to get that insight. You know, I don't know that it changes how the money gets allocated or not, but it's a pretty different point of view from what we have from the Housing Authority. You know, but I, I don't know how that functions.
functionality of that would work. Well, we can all draw straws, you know. Okay. Or, I mean, there will essentially have two housing people on board. Yeah. But you're right, it might be different. Right. different. So is that a proposal or you want to? I, I don't know. Uh, it's that's a thought of something we can do, I guess. I don't know. Uh, well, because I was talking with the master about how familiar they are with our goings on. You know, it varies among the members. I, I guess know. the issue again would be if we put another housing person on, would cons come with another cons come person? <laughs> and then with the store, with Martha. Right, right. Kick you? Is she kicking you now under the table? No, we're not historic. So two so. people from the housing. I'm not from the housing authority, but I have, but a, housing, the mayor's I have a housing background. And you're a mayor appointee. Mayor yeah. appointee. Yeah. So maybe you should count for now. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but know. I would, I would. Are we good to go on this? Yes. Uh, one quick note about possible funding uh, mechanisms for affordable housing. The city will be accepting the provisions of the, the new state law that was passed to allow uh, Airbnbs and short-term rentals to be taxed, and the city's intent is to set aside those funds into a dedicated creation of affordable housing. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that will amount to. Yeah. How many people will be the volunteers at their Airbnbs? Do we um do we know how does does that does that plan come bring with it a uh, thought about how those funds will be allocated? I don't believe so at this time. But I don't know for sure. Okay, well, that's a discussion. Any any further comments? Moving right along then. All right, folks, thank you in the audience for patiently waiting. We will get to your issues. So moving on to the small grant applications. Um, we have somewhere almost uh, $300,000 for this cycle to spend or not to spend as we see fit. What came into us in a packet that we got late last week was just about $210,000 in proposals. So wonder of wonders, we could actually fund everything that we have been presented to this time. Of that, um, 210,000, I think my math is pretty close. Uh, two of them, I'm sorry, three of them are for proposals. We will consider them regular cycle, which is the open space acquisition in those different places. The um, this National Historic District in Florence, and then the pretty small proposal, but above the small grant, which is the control of invasives uh, that Broadbrook Coalition and Fitzgerald Lake sent. So we're gonna set aside those three uh, for discussion next week and move on to the four small grants that are in front of us. Um, three coming, I'm sorry, two coming out of uh, planning, which is the conservation area signage and the one trail branding. One coming from historic Northampton, which is the costumes and textiles, and one coming from Lathrop, which is sort of continuation of, of, the, of the invasive stuff there. Folks in the audience, are you all Lathrop folks? Yeah. Okay, great. So we will feel free to call on you or ask you if you have any clarifying stuff for us. So given that um, we have three folks from Lathrop here to, to help us in our discussion, maybe it makes sense to begin with, with the Lathrop proposal. So the goal, um, so we have, uh, a number of different ways to go about this. The first way is that uh, we can fund a, we can fund a proposal and have it move on to move on to city council. The second way, and we can do that tonight. The second way is to be confused about it and to bump it into the general fund, which we have done, uh, and then reconsider it or consider it as it moves through the regular cycle. And the third thing, of course, is to fund it at a different level than 3,000 or not to fund it at all. But I think the goal is to do one of those three things, or four things, whatever they are, um, tonight. Uh, so let's begin with the Lathrop uh, proposal. Uh, is there a motion on the table? 
Could I just ask, did they plan to make a presentation? It's not the usual, but if somebody usual. wanted great, great to do question. that, I just don't want to have you had done work and then not had the chance to. Thank you. No, we have no planned presentation, okay. but we will speak to the issue. We'll walk you through it in two minutes, or we'll answer any questions. Thanks. Uh, would you like to walk it through us? Walk through it with it. Now walk. If that would be helpful, but you have a lot on your plate, so let you let sure. me know. Sure. Why don't you give us a couple minutes? If, All right. If that would, I think that would be helpful for. Can do. Me. My name is Barbara Walbert. I am the chair of the Land Conservation Committee at Lathrop. I am a resident, and I have two other members, residents, who are members of the same committee, Sharon Grace and Jim Dow, with me tonight. What we're asking for is part of a larger multi-year program to remove invasive plants and increase public information and public access in uh, the two parts, the Northampton part and the East Hampton part, of the 175 acres that we own on uh, Florence Road. Of those acres, some are in the city of Northampton, and among the Northampton city acres are 11 acres in CR, on the western part of our property, along Bassett Brook, also called Parsons Brook, which connects directly to a lot of other uh, preserved land, most of it in APR, which in the proposal there's a map there um, of, the, of the, um, the, the connection that we have. So what we've been trying to do, and we've had two previous grants from you, each for $3,000, what we've been trying to do is to remove invasives from this very connected <laughs> wildlife corridor, connected to Park Hill, um, along Bassett Brook, from this area. And we've made considerable progress. Counting East Hampton and North Hampton, we now have more than 50 acres of woodland and stream that we have cleared of invasives, pretty clear. And in 2017, we held a celebration attended by more than 100 people, including many from local conservation areas and citizens interested in conservation. What we propose now, three things. Continue follow-up in the areas we've already treated. That would be seven acres out of the 11 that are in CR push forward into preliminary work or first stage work in the remaining four acres on the west side of the brook, and enhance public access and public information through an informational sign by uh, publishing a trail map, which we've already done, that shows how you can get there, and then by leading a public program where one of the contractors who's been working with invasives to remove invasives on that land takes people out to the land and shows them what he's been doing and talks to them about it. That will be open to the public. Questions? <clears throat> I was a little unclear what the informational sign. You put up, a, at, at our request, mm -hmm. as I recall, you've put up a, something that shows where the head of the main trail this is, yeah, starts this would a be sign different. there. Yeah. So this is an informational sign rather right. than a trailhead right. sign. So what kind We've of done a couple of these on our land in the last year. Typically, um, it'll be a sign, you know, like this, and you see them at public parks, right? They say, um, ours will say, invasive plants have been removed from this land, with the support of a grant from the, um, and it will explain what's an invasive plant, wh uh, what you can expect to see here, what the impact of our activities are on this piece of land that you're looking at. And my other question was, um, I understand that these are multi-year projects given the nature of invasives. Does this mean that you anticipate um, the need to come back in successive years for successive small grants? Just curious. Mm -hmm. In the 50 acres that we have been working on now for four years or, or a little bit more, we find that resident volunteers can keep up with it except for the work in the, uh, right along the brick, brook in the floodplain, because you need certification for that, and it's, it's difficult to access, it's muddy and all that, and watery. So yes, we might need uh, to devote funds um, to additional follow-up, but we can get a piece of land to the point where resident volunteers can keep up with it. <coughs> 
or at least can can radically reduce the amount of time. Mm -hmm. And and, and we're there the, with the fifty the acres. Four and the four new acres that you're going to newly address. This is the first year. This is the first year. This will be the first year. Yep. And we've we've analyzed what's there. It's like the rest of the area that we've treated. Um, invasives are moving in for sure, but there's a lot of good stuff still there. So now is the time to get it before it's a total mess. And you, you do have a nice trail map now. Um, <laughs> we do. Is, is that, do you have any sense whether that's increased public usage? Because that was another issue that right. we had raised um, before. It certainly has increased usage. Uh, and we don't have numbers of that because we don't count the people who are on the trails. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, and I'm on the trails out there, and, and Sharon is probably five days out of the week, almost all year long. I was out there today. Sharon and I were out there yesterday. We see more people on the trails and on the land, certainly, than when we came six years ago, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are members of the public. Some of them are our own, our own residents. Mm -hmm. So just to follow up with that, if I may, yeah, this is a great trail map, and I'm shocked to say that I haven't been on any of these yet. But you should come. I see where there's a trail head here near the community. Is there parking there yes. for the public? Yes. And do you limit the activity there at all? Do you limit dog walking? Do you limit bicycles? Do you limit, uh, I'm not sure, is it a multi-use trails? Um, it's a trail whose surface is not graded in any way. All we do is clear stuff off of it and if it when it crosses a meadow we mow it. And so you would take your life in the hands to take a, <laughs> a bike on it. But but people do hike it with their dogs. Our rule is dogs on leash pick up after your dog. And no, please. Well and, and then this is a question I, I think for the committee or the chair because the funds would be spent on maintenance in East Hampton? Is that just Northampton? No, only Northampton. Okay, North We're only asking you for money for Northampton. Um, but we contribute substantial other funds to the East Hampton contiguous portion, which we're also working on. To us, it's all one project, but we track carefully for your funds the work that's done um, in the Northampton Park. Uh, the Contractor using herbicides. What herbicides does he use? Do you know? Um, yes, he uses glyphosate and triclopyrin. Uh -oh. <laughs> is there a is there um, any residents in Lathrop that are opposed to use of herbicides on their land? We're all um, we're all sad, <laughs> right? That things have gotten to the point where we have to choose. We feel between using herbicides in uh, cut stump treatment or the, the, the proposal from the contractor um, who is, was Politan Ecological Services and now is Land Stewardship Inc. You probably know them. They've done a lot of work around the area. They were originally highly recommended to us by Lori Sanders. Um, and they, they use herbicides uh, legally and carefully. Our instructions to them are hand removal whenever you can, least use of herbicides. Their two main uh, strategies are cut stump. So they cut the thing off at the, at the ground and then they use a sponge tool held in their hand to apply an herbicide right to the stump. No drip, no spray, it goes right to the stump, goes down into the roots of the plant and messes with its metabolism. For low plants, they also use a spray backpack with a wand, and it has a cone on it to direct the spray, and, and they, uh, they use a, uh, a much thinner, lighter version of the herbicide to spray. We have had, we track very carefully collateral damage on adjacent plants. We have had almost none. We, we really watch it. But we have made the decision that if we are going to control invasives, we have to make some use of those things. Um, forgive my ignorance. Does East Hampton have a community preservation act? I'm sorry? Does East Hampton have a community preservation act? Yes, they do. And have you gone to them for money for the East Hampton? We have. Um, and have they funded you? They have not funded us, although um, they are eager to fund us. I, I would say that truly. 
They have been interested in us. They have us in their perspective. They published an amount for us, a big amount for us, in their perspective of what they might be faced with in the coming year. Um, however, when the campus was built in 1996, there was a promise made by Lather to the city of East Hampton that in, that in this return for being allowed to build that campus, um, which was all in East Hampton at that time, we would put 75 acres of our land into conservation restriction. It never happened. That was a long time ago, but we want to write that, and the city of East Hampton wants us to write that. So as our uh, long-range planning moves forward, Lathrop is fully committed to putting those 72 acres into CR. What the city of East Hampton has said to us is, OK, <laughs> we know you're preparing a grant proposal when you file officially for the 72 acres to be put into CR, then we'll look at your grant proposal. They're just being prudent. They want us to really do it. Any other questions for yeah. uh, Barbara, right? Just one. Mm -hmm. uh, in the area where you're going to do follow-up mm -hmm. work, um, what, what, can you give us an idea of how much um, Re-infiltration of the invasives occurred mm -hmm. since you did the initial. Mm -hmm. Is it like you know ten percent of the area? Um, right. Um, in that total acreage, um, I would say that um, th this would be an estimate just from my being there all the time and, and working there as a as a volunteer and working with our contractor is that probably five to ten percent of the vegetation in that area was invasives, primarily multiflora rose, shrub honeysuckle, oriental bittersweet, and some uh, buckthorn and Japanese barberry. Those were the main ones. Those were removed. Most of them will die. However, two of those plants tend to come back after the first <laughs> treatment simply because they have such extensive underground root systems and that is the oriental bittersweet which is our biggest problem there in terms of eradicating it and the well the shrub honeysuckle and the rose they both will tend to re-sprout again some of it so we go in and give it a second swipe and at we what we found is that after that second swipe now you've got a pretty well controlled Thing, except for the bittersweet. The, the darn bittersweet just won't give up. <laughs> except in our 50 acres, we're pretty much free of bittersweet. There's some small stuff still coming up, but. Well, gratefully, you don't have any Japanese knotweed. <laughs> Not at all. We're looking for it. <laughs> or Phragmites. We don't have any Phragmites, although it's all around us. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions for Barbara? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very impressed with the work your group has done. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion on the table? I move to fund at the requested three thousand dollar amount. Discussion. Second. Oh, sorry. Second. Uh, discussion. Uh, just a, a question about, this relates back to the Northampton Community Gardens. Um, I seem to recall we had this discussion about that project. I realize there were a lot of other issues that were involved that uh, didn't really, mm -hmm. we couldn't really address, but there was a discussion about um, use of um, toxic uh, herbicides in the city in general, and uh, the idea of a discussion of having a policy in the long term. And I'm just wondering if, um, our decision to fund this is going to seem <coughs> at all um, in conflict with that idea that we had. Julie? So when we, when we had the conversation about the community gardens, a lot of that conversation revolved around the fact that it was herbicide at a garden, where people were growing food, because what we had to acknowledge was we funded the use of pesticides herbicide. and herbicide herbicides herbicides at um, Fitzgerald Lake, the conservation area there. And 
that whenever we do this, and we've done it more than once, it comes to city council and there is a city council person who always votes against these um, funding proposals because of the use of the herbicides. She's supposed to be proposing a study on that citywide, right? Do you yeah, going to take this up? I heard that she was going to be looking into a committee or yeah. creating some policy that, to right. my knowledge, that same, I talked with her and she said she was, but I don't think that's happened. So, you know, we would be, I think the city should look at that as a policy and should really try to understand, are there moments where we should or can do nothing but right. using herbicides? But I'm not sure it's for us to make those decisions. And in some way, we've made those decisions with some of what we've done at Mr. I also think, Martha, as we all know, the issue with the garden was the process. The yeah, very, yeah, I know. The very process-oriented yeah. thing. That was a much more overarching problem. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to be sure we weren't going to be. Uh, it was our decision wasn't going to be contested. That's all. Yeah. So, it would probably be useful for applicants though if there was a clear criteria or a test to say, you know, yeah. just so it wasn't arbitrary or capricious. I don't. I don't think we've ever had. It. But but for instance, I mean what we just heard in the presentation was clearly a lot of thought has gone into we don't want to do this, but this yeah. is moment where. Right, and they're using different approaches very selectively. I just I appreciate the um, the thoughtfulness of that approach. I was in um uh, Stockbridge earlier today, driving on tw 20, coming back into Huntington. And boy, we passed a wetland, uh, Fred Mighty's wetland that went on for, uh, it seemed like a mile, just a monoculture of Fred Mighty's. And here's what happens when invasives have their way. So, uh, I think the, if I could add the important thing in a lot of these uh, situations is there's an advocacy group that's willing to get on the ground and do the hard work, and with the Broad Group Coalition and the group at Lathrop, I think you have somebody that is closely monitoring, uh, you know, doing the legwork that t it takes to really use pesticides carefully and judiciously, and that's what makes the whole thing work is the people behind the process. So uh, I'm I'm much more comfortable with it when groups come like this that are, are uh, totally buying into it and willing to work. And we're making the assumption that folks at Lathrop are behind this proposal. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. That's where we get our matching funding. And our, two th our, two our 2017 grant, we promised a $2,500 match for your $3,000. We spent $11,000. Wow. It came from residents. We raise a lot of money, <laughs> and we also have volunteers. Some of us aren't physically capable, but those who are, we have volunteers out there on the ground pulling the boat bittersweet. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Really? Okay, so the proposal is to fully fund the Lathrop uh, Invasive Removal Project for $3,000. There was a second. Without any further discussion, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Thank you, folks. You're welcome to stay Thank for the rest you. of our Thank meeting. You. Um, moving on in no particular order, let's do the historic Northampton, the uh, preservation preparation for making it on Main Street. Uh, <laughs> notice that historic Northampton is closed through March, is it? Martha, the end of February or March, as they really renovate the interior space, I think are knocking down the wall between their presentation space and that far gallery there in the museum, public education space, and then this whole exhibit is expanding out toward the toward the green. So I think they have a really ambitious um, work work going on. Uh, is there a, uh, a motion on the table? So moved. 
to so to fund the historic Northampton textile project. At, at the you know, three thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Martha, any thing coming from? Yeah, so we talked about this very briefly at our commission meeting um, at the end of last month. And um, I think the only question was raised was just about uh, how the funds are going to be used and whether they would fall into the historic preservation and rehabilitation category. Um, I think because it's being used to purchase uh, items that will be helpful in both mounting the exhibit and also preserving these. Uh, costumes long term. We felt like it probably should have fallen into the category. Um, Lynn Bassett is, like you read, is a, she's a colleague. She's a really, really skilled textile conservator. Um, very lucky to have her. And I think we were also um, impressed that with their approach to interpretation of this collection, I've read this, that they're making these um, replica cotton. Mm -hmm. Best and cloak that kids can go and try on, and it just it just seems really fabulous. So we are very much in support of it. So Linda, my understanding is that of the six thousand dollar budget, fifteen or uh, forty four hundred of it goes to the uh, Bassett. Is that correct? And then only fifteen hundred goes to an actual uh, textiles and dress forms and bases. Comments? Comments? It's an interesting question. <laughs> whether, whether it all qualifies or, or not. I, I love the idea. And my, that would be my only reservation if all the money didn't quite qualify. So I'll look over at our resident expert here, Sarah. So I, uh, Lori Sanders had few ideas, all of which were wonderful projects, um, several of which clearly were not eligible mm -hmm. for CPA funding. This seemed to be the, the closest one to fit into that box as, as a direct preservation of historic artifacts. I, I think it's up to the community to decide so so how of much of consulting time is, is her expertise in determining what materials to use, how to go about preserving. Yeah. I think it probably gets there. So it, so it, it, it's purchasing new material, new textiles, and how? Well, it's the mannequins, and it's the, the particular kind of non-acidic paper to stuff the right. stuff them in and to hold their form. If, if they were asking for money to uh, to restore and recreate uh, part part of a historic curtain in a house, we would say great. <laughs> because it's like fabric that doesn't go on the window, it goes on a person. Like, it seems obviously part of the historic preservation to me. You have to have a very narrow view of, of what makes architecture. And it's to say it only has to get nailed to the wall, I think. So I think it's really um, part of the experience. Whether it's in the statute or not, I don't know. Yeah, parts of it aren't really that different from the uh, Academy of Music historic curtain. Right. I, there were right. there were new, right. and they had to do a lot of treatment techniques to ensure that it was preserved. And it, it seems like if this is placed on a mannequin and uh, careful. Didn't we buy like storage boxes for cones and stuff? Uh, guns. 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 Yeah. Guns. Yeah. 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 Brush. Oh, brush. 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 Oh, okay. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Brush. Yeah. I don't see how this is any more complex. I, I would support it. I think we should get a private show. <laughs> <laughs> And a, private, no a private city. Did you look away? This looks really good. It's so nice. I just can't wait to see it. There is a gender issue. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. 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 Apparently, they're recreating that. They are. They are called mannequins. Sarah, am I right that we're underfunded? in historic preservation this room, even even if we were to do the um, the historic district. Oh, that's good. There point. is sixty four thousand in the historic preserve and the remainder of the rest of the fund now. Okay. 
So the proposal on the floor is for $3,000 for historic North Hampton. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Isn't it nice to have money? <laughs> and to only be asked for $3,000. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so last two proposals for the small grants are um, from our very own Office of Planning and Sustainability. Let's deal with the conservation area identification signage upgrades first. Uh, is there a proposal on the floor for that one? I move that we approve it for three thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Jack. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just affirming the policy that identifying our, our conservation land we hold in common is a good idea. People might not even know it's conservation land unless there's a sign there. So um, I think it's, it's money well spent. And uh, it also shows that uh, there's stewardship happening um, and trails and opportunities for recreation. So. I think it's uh, it's a great idea to have a, a signage in place. So I'm glad that they're taking the, the time to do that. Very important. Are you clear? Uh, I may not have read the proposal carefully enough. Are, are you clear whether this will like take care of this for all the? I think they have a pretty good system. Um, I know always, going forward. Yeah, because there are signs that don't last very long, but they've done some homework on uh, getting sturdy signage and things that are going to last for a, a long time. But should, it, it, is this going to take care of all that backlog? Do you have a sense or not? Um, I don't know if it covers absolutely every... That's a good question. It, I, it's my understanding that it should cover everything that it isn't damaged, so if a sign gets hit by cars, and then that might not cover that going forward. Right. So they should get most of the bigger areas and the, the worst signs going back. 
And, and where appropriate, these signs will also have a nod towards the um, CPA committee funds in that area? Yes, the logos, <coughs> you can actually, uh, it's too small, but uh, the Mill River Greenway example is the city seal and it says Community Preservation Act around the outside. Because it's really important. I think there's so many of my neighbors just don't understand where that their tax monies are going to. You know, the CPM on the so it's great. So, see, I did have signs for every access point. Is so, so, yeah. there? Yeah. 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 Um, access points, and then maybe even some areas where there really isn't any access, but it's important to let people know this is permanently preserved. Right. So none of these are, none of this is trail signage. Nope. Is that correct? Right. And Khan's comm is obviously good with this, Jack, is that yeah. correct? Uh, questions for Sarah or for Jack? Yeah. yeah. I just want to amplify what Linda said. Um, I would like to see an end to these. <laughs> enter these applications or enter yeah. these signs? Oh. No, no, I want as many signs as we need and then no more. And I'd like to know when that's going to happen. Well, based on this application, how could there ever be an end? Because here, what we're currently doing is replacing things that have gotten. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get like, that. But there's just no end. Yeah. I just get old. But we keep Hopefully buying land, so house. we have to keep buying. Well, no, and, and on the so land, what we've done is we've. we've yeah. We've, you know, come up with a with a plan that incorporates signage as part of the overall. And I, I, I get the, the things run out of, but it just seems yeah. like it, you know, drownage by a thousand bricks. Right, and it, it, we want the public to see and know the land that's conserved. No yeah. question about it. Right. But we don't want. We'd like to pay for land, not signs. Right, and and also know that all the signs are in place, and that I mean, you know, just just right. just I, just just you know, and every three years we'll get a sign replacement, you know, application for the five that have you know been hit by trucks or whatever, and, and that, but that we will know we have achieved you know signage saturation, and and, and, and then we can just just move forward. Well. Sarah. And, and one more thing on the sign, I and mean, we have two requests for two different types of yeah. signs. Both of them have a total project budget of 6000 and both of them come in at our small grant 3000 maximum. And and there's no detail about where that budget came from. That, that for me was, I mean, I read both these, and that was my issue. I was like, okay, I see it. The budget is $6,000. To do what? Do you want to kick it into the general discussion? Well, I'd like a budget. So the, related to that, and maybe, I mean, it, the match is, um, it's like staff time. Right? Yeah. So that's just, right. um, is that really a match? It's really operating money? For? Yeah. It's not like, um, it just, it's just another way for the city to finance it. I mean, I promise you, if you give me a budget of $6,000, I can buy a great refrigerator for my kitchen. A great refrigerator. But mm -hmm. I'd probably come in with a different number for that refrigerator, too. If you said $6,000, so I could go for $3,000, I'll do it. Well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, just on the match, it says here, it commits staff time to oversee the project, plus routing and painting the sign letters, creating partner logos, and installing all signs. So. I think the planning office has recently hired a new part-time staff person who's going to actually implement this. Sarah, Sarah you would know yes. better than us, but yes. <clears throat> so there actually will be labor on his part, you know, creating the signs, installing them, and doing all that, and that's been paid by the office of planning sustainability. So it's just not Wayne writing up the narratives and. Uh, I mean, it's sort of a salaried person, or is it this person will be working hourly, and so you're, you could actually break down his hourly rate for this that you put into this? Yeah, so they could break it down, I'm sure. I don't know, it's a part time position, I don't know how that works in that city if it's hourly or salary. Sarah? Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, he's a half time salary. So. Right, but I'm going to come back to the budget. How many signs? How much per sign? What are we? What exactly? Or is it just, hey, I can get in for three thousand? I 
value for 3,000. Yeah, I think this is kind of more like the conservation fund I know. that we're doing. I think, I, it seems fund. like it's, it's left vague, and I think Wayne's probably thinking by the time that we actually get the money approved, like he'll probably know more about you know, this is part of his uh, sinister scheme to get $6,000 for signs, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think I feel some responsibility because I, I think a few times when he's come for money for other things, I say, how about some signage and some. Yes, <laughs> that's true. I think it's great. You know, I don't know. I don't care how many times I come back for signs. I think it's so confusing to most people. Even if you're trying to figure out what's public land or what's conserved land, it's hard. And for most people who don't think about it, you know, I think the more signage, the better the game is. But the other the other point is if you go out to buy commercial signs, you realize that this budget is pretty minimal. So I think we're getting good value for our money, even though it's, it might not be itemized to the penny. I see it as a multiplier effect. The hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that we spent on the land, the signs actually get people to use it and, and know what it is. Uh -oh. It's a process thing, right? I can look at it. Local number I um I I agree with everything that's been said. I think it does have a multiplier effect. I I think that it's important that we be able to identify for the people who pay for this stuff what it is that the tax dollars are buying. I I just I would just like to know I I had, I had a great analogy in a little way. Um, <laughs> it's hard for me to feel like I'm doing responsive budgeting when I don't know what I'm buying and I don't know what the total program costs are and I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even if it's little bits, mm -hmm. from a procedural standpoint, it, it's very unsatisfying for me. And um, so, you know, when I saw two $6,000 proposals 50-50 with a CPA grant, my antenna went up. And it's going to go up every time that I see something that I feel is um, uh, I'm looking for the right word here. But um, disingenuous? No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to accuse anybody of disingenuousness. But but there's 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 a um, uh, uh, full utilization of the system. I'll go with that. Go yes. With that. So, Chris, I know we've talked about this before. I don't know whether it was settled, but you know, we have a proposal in the large grant category to purchase some more conservation land. Mm -hmm. You know, in cemeteries, traditionally, when you sell someone a plot, they have to pay part of the purchase price is a perpetual care fund, as is kind of you know, an analogy. So um, is, you know, maybe it's something that we should really insist that we or whoever do in the future is that part of the purchase price is built in a fund to care and also to keep signage on the yeah, property. Yeah, already covered that. Yeah, I think, I think we're hit, I think we're almost there. It's just, it, it's just, the signs just keep popping up. And I, I get, you know. <laughs> so we're not there yeah. now. You know, and it, it, I, I, even as I say it, I feel like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but, but, there, but there really is something to my mind as somebody who spends a lot of time thinking about budgets, about being able to account for line items and, mm -hmm. and, and know it, what DOD says is total program cost. It's a number. Sometimes it changes, but it's a number. And from year to year, it's the same number for each program. It's got a, it's got a program number and a dollar number that goes next to it. And it's identifiable through every DOD document wherever you go. And I'm not looking for that level of spe specificity, but I think I think you you said it really well. So I mean, so I think we, this last time or a couple of mm -hmm. sessions ago, we kicked one yes. application yes. to the general. Sarah, can I just go back to another point? Is we have two proposals <coughs> on signs. One is to do brand I know. I know for a trail that doesn't yet exist but kind of exists. I think you were at the one meeting too. We both went to the one meeting, right? But the thing is, another way of doing this is signs. Yeah. Right? It's the same person who's going to make the signs. It's 
signs. It's a large grant for signs, for one trail and for conservation. It's signs, right? And maybe that's, I think. that gets us more of the detail, just put it in large and deal with signs. And why was it not presented that way? Because for small grants, small grants you can go 3,000. No, no, I understand that, but I think it's so. So you're saying that Dwayne sort of broke this apart so he could yes. have to go through the full process. Okay, I believe so. That, that's how it reads. Yeah. Sure. Okay. 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 That's how it reads. Because the comment, the money any sooner, I know. It's, it's just the comment I'd like to make, and I, I don't know if this will make you feel any better, but the one great thing about small grants, even if they're uniform and repetitive, is that they come up frequently and you have a, a, a test to see money was given, a little bit of work was done, you were able to see the results of that effort, and then they came for some more money. Um, it, is, it is a check on the system. It might make you feel better to know that we easily give the small grants out, but there is repeated supervision for that grant because if, if it comes up again, you've got a repetitive nature, you've got you know that somebody followed through on that on that small grant. So yeah. I would also point out that like even in state procurement, like chapter thirty B allows for procurement of things of different levels yeah. to be done with different yeah. amounts of right. oversight. Right. And I think given that this is a small amount of money yeah. and I think it's a trusted counterparty I, I, I would see an issue here. If it was someone walking in that we've never heard of saying I'll put signs on my trails that you've never heard of, you know, it's I think we know who this is, so I don't see it as a problem. And we've asked for signs in turn, right? Yeah, we have exactly. said we'd like to get better signage yeah. everywhere. So, but it is just sort of that small grant, small grant, signs, signs, signs. And right. and you know, I'm going to return to my original statement, which is, yes, we want signs. We want land. We want open space. That's what we really wanted. You know, we're looking at money on open space. We want to spend it on open space. And it's part of that. Sarah, does, does Wayne know how many signs and where they would go, or is this, you know, I get 3,000 and, and then I'll figure it out, or is there I, a list? But may, I don't know if there's a definitive list now, if the committee asks for one. I'm sure you could always come up with general areas and examples of the more fresh trees. <coughs> is there an overall sign program for the conservation land in the city? I mean, it, it feels like we've seen a lot of different iterations, and then one of these is for branding, right, coming up with a new logo. And I'm just wondering if there's an overall sign that is, is a hierarchy that you know, trails have one design, and conservation land is trailheads have another, and interpretive signs and, have and another. And the recreation fields have another one. Yeah, yeah. So the, they're all yeah, right, right. And the Welcome to Northampton sign is right. something else. Yeah. I mean, that, I think that's something that needs to be considered. Trails don't have one because trails are overseen by the whatever partner organization is interested in that area. So Mineral Hills has one set of signs, Broadbrook Coalition does their own signs, so those are different. But the, these uh, overall area signs are at least part of the program. Well, this one trail is an attempt to actually unify those things, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an attempt to, yeah. to have a, a single sign around. Well, yeah, it's sort of. One trail's not only going to unify them, one trail's going to create the, the routing around the entire Hampton through some of those trails. You know, one trail is kind of like, um, if you, it, so if, if, when you go to Europe, if you're hiking anywhere, which is by, I can't remember the name of the name in English, the Jakobsweg, the, the trail that goes all through Europe and everybody joins together and ultimately you find yourself in Spain and you're on the, No. <laughs> it's very famous, right? And everywhere you go, you can see if you're in a city that needs to that trail, and it's a, it's a, um, you know, it's a spiritual trail. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little bit about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So if you're in Germany and there's a trail that leads to that, you see the Jakobsweg sign. It's a blue sign with a bright yellow sign. Mm -hmm. The one trail is going to be like that, but you'll still, if you're in Leeds, you'll see the lead signs, and if you're in Mineral Hills, you'll see Mineral Hills signs. It just Kind of as a trail that loops the whole city. <coughs> Neat idea. If you look at the map on the one, the current version of the one trail map, right, all that Lathrop land is out of it. So they'll still have their land, their signs. But, it, you know, it's just branding a, a, a way of walking the whole city. Mm -hmm. So, kind of neat. But I'm all for signs. 
right? Let's get people out, get them into the open space. That's the recreation side of it. Don't just buy the land, put them there. So, signs up. So, however, however we vote, I think there is a sense that um, even though it's a small grant proposal, when Wayne gives us these, we can encourage him to be a little more detailed in terms mm -hmm. of your budget. And stuff. Yeah. So, this is not unique to proposals coming from Wayne. It seems like we're always asking for more information from him. So, maybe you could pass that on. Sure. Or, and we can pass that on to him when we see him next week. I mean, uh, two weeks from now, right? Uh, who will be presenting. So let's remember that to uh, give to Wayne any time to Well, there's nothing yeah. stopping us from voting on these small grants at the next session. Oh, right. There's a problem. We can do whatever we want. We're the CPC. <laughs> and it's, is there a process where he invoices us for this $3,000 and at that time he itemizes where the signs were um, installed? And so uh, I, <coughs> I would treat this the same as any other award. So we, you couldn't just say, oh, I give me $3,000 so I can buy some stuff. It's right. like, well, I bought 20 planks of black locusts. Here's an invoice for that. Please reimburse me. Or we bought you know, 100 little metal discs. Please reimburse me for that. So there's no summary at the end that here's where they were installed and like photos of those 11 spots or uh, is that something we could ask for? Yeah, and not, not specifically as part of the CPA grant, but yeah. that, that's certainly something that makes sense. Because from what I'm hearing, you funded these small applications for similar things before. And was there a kind of an evaluation of that process or the cost of it or what it? Routinely, we do not have people come in and give us you know, uh, give us those things. They give them to Sarah. I mean, Sarah knows exactly what's going on. Uh, but we tend to not get a final report. But there, uh, there are always final reports produced. Uh, and, they're, and they're filed away, and we do put a caveat in each of the contracts in MOU that, hey, the CPC might require you to come in and give them a synopsis of your project. Hmm. I think the final reports are great if we identify after the fact that a problem occurs or there are concerns about the way the program is carried out, we can then go back and backtrack. But as far as criteria for approving money, they're very little value to me. And what I really want is the detail up front so that I can get a feel for what I'm actually buying. Um, I'd like to know the color of the car before I drive off the lot. And that's... Um, well, we gave Dial Self 100, like, mm. how much more money for some vague thing that they wanted to do and they yeah. didn't even spend the money? I don't think we hold anyone else to that criteria, especially for not this amount of money. I, I, I have to say that, you know, the, the, the dial self episode left me a little chagrined and, and certainly uh, more cautious moving forward. I think it was not our finest moment, um, even though it was well-intentioned, and I certainly had a role to play in that, but, but um, just because I aired in the past doesn't condemn me to air in the future. Prerogative, <laughs> David. Further discussion on this? Okay, so the motion on the floor is $3,000 for the conspirator identification signage. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. Last but not least, we've talked about a little, is the uh, one trail branding and signage. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> if somebody who understands it better could explain it better to me than the application explained it to me. I yeah, I agree. Jack, you want to take a? Well, I, I didn't have a chance to go to the meeting. I guess some of you did. Uh, but I know, understand the concept that it's just coming together is we have all these conservation lands that are many of them connecting each other. <clears throat> the concept was to get a trail that would unify it and it would be a circular trail that would go around the city. And um, it looks like it's a possibility of this actually being quite the trail covering quite an area with some alternate routes involved as well. So again, it's an opportunity for recreation 
any property that we already have. And I'm sorry, I missed the meeting. Just what I didn't, I'm, part of what I didn't understand is that there's huge gaps here. So, I mean, there is a lot of land. There's also a lot of land missing. I have no idea what the, the likelihood of really making this a unified trail ever is. I think the concept is nice, but... Well, I don't think the idea is that you're always going to be walking on city property. It's very... Well, it's some easement. Yeah. But at least connect. I mean, that was what we were doing, was connecting. Yeah, yeah. They, they do, yeah. if I might, they do pretty much connect, and it's also seen as a multi-year, much, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, mm -hmm. I think, before it's all done. So some of the signs will not be visionary, but there will be gaps between the signings. But most of the trails do already exist. <clears throat> There's a lot of work to be done. The, the concept too is that it's a multi-use trail and it's all the same treatment of the path, much as um, different than what our friends at Lathrop were say, where it's just mm -hmm. mowed grass. It's really gonna be a, a walking trail amenable to bikes, to, you know, to all kinds of people power. Um, so most of the trails exist. We have stayed, Wayne has stayed away in the planning office and the group from some real crucial areas, like you'll see the Meadows isn't involved in here, that might be phase two, as we, you know, over by Arcadia, they're not in there, which is a really great walking area and all. So that again will maybe be another part of the one trail down the road. Um, and the river was the other conversation. The river, How do we right. get so the can you use a river trail even? Can you have a river trail that's part of the one trail to get people out on on that part of our... You know how it... Like to Rainbow Beach. Right? How long is like the dashed line that's on this map? How long a trail is that? Oh, you know? Yeah, it goes on the bottom to the estimate. So yeah, it's yeah. six, seven months? I think it's more. we said it was like 10 or 11 right. miles. Yeah. Really. <coughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's I think it's a fantastic idea yeah. and, and it's really great big thinking. I mean, Again, to come back to my time in England when you can walk in the dead of winter and it's 50 degrees. I mean, they have something like this in a lot of, you can walk on the Thames right. 140 miles. I mean, in Bath, there's something like this that you can circle the whole city of Bath. And and I think it's a, actually a great a tourism thing. People are saying, Northampton has this trail. You can walk around the whole city. Mm -hmm. Let's go there, you know, and you can go on the train and go down this trail. And I think it's a fantastic idea. I like the idea. I'm just, I'm still having trouble understanding you know, with all these gaps. What, 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 how do those gaps get filled in? Or are you telling me they're not really gaps? Well, yeah, walk along here. the road for a piece of it. Or using the bike path for pieces of it. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure the gaps you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see a little bit better on the color. There really aren't any mm -hmm. gaps here. Oh, but there's, so, so there are trails here. That's what this shows the green is what we own, but it's there's there's easement to go through. So there's trail with an easement so people can walk there. So all of this that is red dashes is either owned or there's a yeah. easement to permit yeah. walking and then that's the road. Okay, but let's and, and we have the in group and the out group here. So, so. <laughs> so well it, it just the 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 it's easier to see on the color yeah. the email that we got than on the the, the tough spot on it, it, which doesn't show, is that spot of coming under 91, right? Yeah. Up, up on the north end. There really may not be a spot. Or there may be a spot. One issue I have with this grant is I'm still confused as to exactly exact what the budget is for. <laughs> it is, for, is it for hiring someone it's to make the logo? Is that the main thing? And then... From the logo making signs and the signs go where? I mean, what is, what do we get for 3000 Jack, can you help us or Sarah or? <coughs> and it says, come in staff time to oversee professional creation of a logo. And then. Uh, if you read on the second page under matching funds, yeah. it seems to. So you make the logo, you make the signs, and then install the sign. Work with the sign, come and print the signs, and install the sign that you want to complete. So it sounds like it's... I mean, 
I mean, that's not what we're all paying for, but it's not too hot. This is and so it's making a logo. Their match is to install it. So we're paying for a logo. That went over well with the last logo, the was it West oh. Mass. <laughs> <laughs> and that cost how much? What was that $60,000 yeah, to come up with West Mass? Oh my God. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's does anyone, anyone who knows more about this, is there, I mean, I think beyond a sign vote, what I found frustrating with land under CR is that there's sort of a web page on the city website that has a bunch of maps of varying quality, but there isn't, mm. well, I mean, I know that it exists because I know that this, like, that's what this is, it's like a map of all land under CR and an easy to find a way, like, way to, to see all the trails. So is there an online component of this, like a trail? I, mean, I assume there would be. Yeah, there, there was certainly Some talk it. about that being in one of the phases that it would be, you know, smartphone enabled, yeah. that there would be an online yeah. version of this that you could download at any point right. or you could point yourself out on GPS market mm -hmm. where you are. Um, but again, that's not wrapped up in that's this. That's not design. this, but yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, another part of this, I think, is to help Wade and the city kind of on a regular basis, twice a year or so, is to pull together these various steward groups like Broadbrook Coalition, Mineral Hills, um, the Friends of the Northampton Trails and Greenways and get them to come together because they all share in kind of the maintenance and the upkeep of these trails. Mm -hmm. So it's to help kind of convene those meetings also. That's not really spelled out in here either, but that's one of the goals of um, the whole one trail. So is the, um, maybe you can't answer this, is the, um, you know, it's obviously creation, coming up with the creation of a logo, which is a process, especially if you're working with stakeholders. Um, do, but but it's, is it also to identify the types of signs that need to go up? You know, are they trailhead signs? Are they parking signs? Are they interpretive signs? Are they um, blazes? And what what are they? And is that doesn't appear to be known? Is that not known at this point? I, I think it's intended to be uh, more like trail markings. So not a not bigger signs, just not like for blazing the, the one trail route. So, like placed every mile, or placed um, at intersections, or placed and, at like home. yeah, all of it. So in, in areas where people can see them, and in intersections, not true. Really. But it has not been identified like how many are needed. No, no. Okay, so that's going to be part of the process they're going through in the creation of the logo. I'm assuming. Right, because within some of these CRs, like Denver or something, like that, there's a lot of different trails. So to know right. on the right trail yeah. within the CR to stay on this, you know, it's tricky. Exactly. So, yeah. It seems like to be just like the very first foot in the door of this yeah. process. So yeah. Questions? Comments? I, I think it is a very creative idea. It's, it creates a sense of community, which I think is really important. I think it's worth $3,000 to get this started. I'm totally in favor of this. I'd be also be, I'd actually vote in favor of not doing it as part of the small grants just so we can actually talk to one another. Given that the money that gets in at the same time, I know that. I don't know if you more about it. I probably can always ask him about it when he's here. That's true. Because my assumption is this the first on the one trail in the application yeah. that you'll see there'll be many more of them. I would assume well, it's going to be a good project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not just that's inside. Part of why it was yeah, yeah, I just didn't know the scope. But whether yes, there was yeah. a lot of acquisition or easement yeah. acquisition or whatever yeah. associated with it, and therefore whether it was going to lead to. So oh, one trail like master one. plan is that what you're? Yeah, I'm sure he has. Well, yeah. I'm sure he has it. Yeah. So it it is in the open use and recreation it plan. Okay, the city. The, I mean, this is part of okay. what's in that plan. Right. Wayne came to obviously it was a um, he came to rec commission yeah, we all had right. conversations about what's in this plan and in the plan was the one trail and then he's convened the first one trail meeting bringing all of the parties to the table to start this conversation about I think we spent an hour mapping right yeah, right and what what are the possible routes that a one trail trail could look like and how would we let visitors to the city know that they were on part of our one trail, not just in Mineral Hills, but you're in Mineral Hills on the one trail, keep going and you're going to end up in, I don't know, wherever you end up next. <laughs> 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 I 
Right. I mean, the fact that six thousand dollars. Thank you, Robert Till. Thank you, Robert Till. Yeah. I mean, six thousand dollars is not enough clearly for all right. the signs along yeah. the miles of trails. So clearly, this is a piece of a bigger plan. So, yeah. Well, it almost seems like he's trying to brand the process of yeah. developing this trail, mm -hmm. and then you need an identification image yeah. that can right. be used on all the promotional materials and grant applications and letterhead and all that stuff. Yeah. And it is a smaller piece. I know they're all, the office is also looking at an RTP grant through the, uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation to fund some more of this kind of visiting and branding um, and kind of marketing, you know, as you were saying, to let the visitors know to outside the city that this is what you can find here. So and who's deciding, like, uh, with a consultant, like, that that's the low? I mean, is there a, is this going before? It's at staff time. Is the staff are going to oversee that. It seems like a nice opportunity for a public process. Yeah, it's a yeah, happy where you see a, yeah. a public a competition or something. You know, people yeah. like to be part of that process. Yeah. It seems odd to just, is it just in house and decide that's, you know. Sometimes it's good to get Yeah, and yeah. Burgundy. I, 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 I think there's I a bigger public process. Yeah, there. I think okay. he's going to come back to the process he's already started, which is bringing all the groups together yeah. for that. The first talk about what the map could look like, and the next talk about what the logo could look right. like. And where do you sign? How do you sign in? Mm -hmm. You know, I have it pulled up on my computer, but that thing there, that's the sign all over Europe for mm -hmm. I'm on a, a trail that leads to the Camino. It's like this sun and sign. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. cool. Right? It doesn't matter where you are in Europe, you know you can get to the Camino right. from that. And that's the one idea. So if everyone's coming together to create this <coughs> logo, what are we paying for? No, we're not creating. The group that came in isn't creating logo, but they might see six it's versions of it and say, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. That's the one. One trip, one. Uh -huh. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, anyway, I think we should just fund it and see if our one trailer comes on. Any other questions, comments one about this? Are we ready to vote? Yeah. yeah. So all those in favor of $3,000 for the one trail? All those opposed? Okay. So for four, $12,000 down. Another 198 that we will be looking at next, uh, in two weeks from uh, today. Uh, before we break for the evening, uh, a couple things. One is scheduling site visits. So we have three proposals in front of us. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Fitzgerald Lake is not necessary for us to take a look at. People can hike there. We know what the ongoing invasive issue is. Uh, Steve Schreimer, I'm sorry, Schreimer, uh, we all know would be more than happy to give a tour of some of these sites as he does so frequently and so well in Florence. So I think would folks be interested in visiting at least some of these? Is, I'm seeing some heads not, not yes. 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 Okay, so that would be one. And then the uh, the other proposal is the, uh, what's the third one again? Four oh. parcels. Yeah. So, how can we do this? So is there a, 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 a date for this? I mean, the, 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 let's look at the four parcels. Sarah, in the, with the intimate weather, which of those could we get to, do you think? Um, Are there any existing trails? Is it a drive-by? Rocky Hill Greenway is a drive-by. That's easily visible from the road. Um, uh, the, the dog park is fairly easily accessible because it doesn't sound too much. Sorry, which one is that? Uh, that's oh, one, yeah, I that's see. one trail. Uh, it, the northernmost mineral hills piece, um, you have asked the parcel I was part of it. So. Well, what would a site visit entail? Would the group walk around the boundaries of this land? Would we walk evaluate? Usually walk through it, just yeah. get a feel for where it is. And can't you do that more or less via Google Earth? Just kind of look at the parcels via the maps and... I think in the past people have gotten a lot of actually hiking <coughs> on the trail. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. So, Sarah, of your there's, there's no established trails on any of them except the cemetery. There's cemetery. 
So you're thinking that that's not an appropriate? No, I mean, if people want to go out, they do definitely visit a couple. Just by so ourselves, though, not. Oh, either way. Either way. Okay, who would like to go out with Sarah meeting us? Depends on when it is. Okay, so let's look at, let's see, we're trying to do this in the next, uh, look at our schedule here. Where we're trying to move quickly, meeting with applicants on the 20th and beginning recommendations on the 6th. So that's really in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, light is an issue still. You know, the sun is setting after 5 now. In the past, we've done some before our Wednesday meeting. It does not seem appropriate. To do these them then, correct? Yeah, Saturday mornings. We have done some Saturday mornings, which would make sense because these require daytime uh, daytime issues. I suppose some would be around Steve Strymer's. Did I say his name right? Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Strymer's schedule. Um, and Sarah, you would lead folks in. Uh, me and Wayne, depending on the okay. So can we come up with a Saturday? What are our Saturdays? Today is the uh, is the sixth, so seven, eighth, ninth is a Saturday, sixteenth, ninth, sixteenth, twenty-third. Do any of those work for people who have their schedules out? I'm seeing heads. Is any conflicts in any of those Saturdays that are out for? Can I do the 23rd? You yep. said the 23rd. That's one of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be good to do four of the, the 16th seem good. Does the 16th seem good for folks? I'm gone, but I've been on Steve's walks. I'm on the 16th. But, but I could certainly do this on by own. myself also. Yep. We have a good we have a good map of the Florence stuff and we, we have the that, property stuff. That one is really a car trip more than anything. I don't think there's specific houses at this point that he's gonna detail. Well, I think Steve that. does walking. That would be a walking thing from Steve, correct? And this would well, yeah, that is a probably, big this is a big walk. It's a big district and he probably oh, would, would not get, take you through the entire thing. Yeah. You, you couldn't. No. But you right. you could do a you know core portion of it or something like that. So the 23rd seems to be out. We're looking at the 17th, if we could. Is it, does this that? Is Sunday. I'm sorry, the 16th. Uh, if not the 16th, the 30th. Uh, there is no second. Oh, that's right, it's February. <laughs> March 2nd. Thank you. So, Sarah, can you get in touch with Steve? Does, does March 2nd work? March 2nd. It's better. March 2nd? March 2nd. <laughs> Just had to do it. Yeah, we're not going to get everybody. March 2nd? Okay, can you see if Steve's available and yourself or Wayne? And what time have we done this? 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, earlier? 10 o'clock? So shooting for 10 o'clock on March the 2nd. Oh, I thought, I thought we were the 16th or the 2nd. 16th or the 2nd. <coughs> Excuse me. Good for that? Okay, thank you, Sarah. You'll be back. Get back to us as soon as you get their, their schedules. And once again, if we have any written questions, uh, getting them to Sarah as soon as possible, but uh, at least by Friday, right? Might give us a little day. Day reprieve there. Any other business not foreseen when the event was published? Motion to adjourn, and a second. All right.